Well, the story I'm going to tell today then is about Darwin's first great ambition. We all know him mainly from his having achieved his second great ambition in evolution. So we'll have to set that aside for the moment and talk about his first great ambition. His ambition to create a th theoretical basis for the science of geology. His basic idea was that geology would turn out to be simple. That's what he said. Uh, geology will turn out simple. And the simplicity came in his mind from a balancing of forces between the rise of the Earth's crust elevation and its fall, subsidence. So he thought when geologists figured this out, rise and fall, they'd really understand geology. Now, it turned out that things were more complicated than that. However, the current foundation for geological sci science is plate tectonics theory, which is a more horizontal view of geology, the field. But it is also quite simple. So he, his, his theory, in a strange way, resonates what, with what turned out to be true. The particular piece of geology that Darwin is best known for is his theory of the origin and distribution of coral reefs. Uh, Darwin th had the idea of correlating movements of the Earth with coral reefs as an indicator for subsidence, and mountains and uh, volcanoes as an indicator for rising land. Uh, the place that he had the best opportunity to actually climb around on a uh, coral reef himself was in the Keeling Islands in the Indian Ocean. And this is a quite beautiful drawing he did of the Keeling Islands. And in his view, um, the uh, coral reefs were formed by, uh, were built on a <coughs> gently subsiding ocean floor. And that uh, they might be thousands of feet thick. After the voyage, Darwin put together his information on coral reefs in this wonderful chart, which appears in his 1842 book on coral reefs. And it's a survey of the oceans, the Pacific and Indian Ocean. Uh, and uh, blue areas indicate subsidence, and red areas indicate elevation. Darwin expressed himself very ambitiously on this subject. Uh, he said the geology, the whole world will turn out simple, and I've applied all this to vertical movements, and he really thought he'd cracked the egg. And in his great uh, enthusiasm, he referred to himself always during this period as a geologist. He wrote, I, a geologist, have ill-defined notion of land covered with ocean, former animals, slow force cracking services, truly poetical. And right after that in his note, because he goes on to talk about what he means by poetry, and he draws on uh, William Wordsworth's preface to the lyrical ballads. Uh, he, uh, and look, Wordsworth writes, poetry is the first and last of all knowledge. It is, is as immortal as the heart of man. The remotest discoveries of the chemist, the botanist, of the mineralogist will be as proper objects of the poet's art as any upon which it can be employed. <laughs> so Wordsworth is really inviting men of science to regard what they're doing as being poetic. And Darwin accepted this. And he, um, he thought of himself, his own identity as a geologist, in explicitly romantic terms. <laughs> 